Hi everyone, it's Tasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This past week I've been thrift shopping, as always, and I've been looking for items based on my most recent Pottery Barn inspo. So I'm looking to create high-end looking decor moments while saving as much as possible over the original Pottery Barn prices. So come on and join me for this Pottery Barn thrift challenge. So the first piece of Pottery Barn inspo for this time around were the picture frames. I always think that Pottery Barn has a fantastic selection of picture frames, lots of different styles, and they all seem very high quality. Um, this time around, this particular image with this large gallery wall with these all black wooden frames really caught my eye, and I've been meaning to do something like this up my stairway with lots of our family photos. I like to pull them all together into one place. Unfortunately, the price on these is kind of a lot. Uh, individually, they are like at least, you know, $30 each for these wooden frames, but I came across this group of nine of these five by seven black frames at the thrift store a while back. I was very fortunate to find so many at once, but they were $2 each, so I grabbed those, and I'm just putting in some family photos that I already have printed off that I know I want to go on this gallery wall. My husband and I were also gifted some black frames as it happens for our wedding gifts so we have some larger ones and some different sizes that are already in black as well so it makes it nice and easy for me to get a head start on this. I'm also going to be ordering this set of six wooden black frames from Amazon to fill out the wall even farther. This is a great deal for only $25 so those are on their way to me soon. And I'm just hanging these kind of staggered up my stairway, trying to mix the larger sizes in with the smaller ones, which are obviously the ones I have the most of right now. And I'm leaving myself some space to go upwards and add the new ones and farther up the staircase towards the upstairs hallway as well. I really like the way that these look when they're all brought together into one gallery wall. I think it makes a nicer aesthetic statement rather than kind of spread out throughout the rest of the house. So between the frames that I picked up at the thrift store, the ones that I already had on hand, and the ones that are coming from Amazon, I'm still in at under $50 for this whole gallery wall, and I could only have gotten a couple of frames from Pottery Barn for that price. So another piece of Pottery Barn inspo for me for this time was this beautiful rattan wrapped pitcher. I really love the way that this looks. It's nice and warm and just inviting. It's nice to have small touches of rattan. I don't want tons of it because I'm not going for a boho look, but I do love little pieces of it like this. So I'm hitting Goodwill in hopes that I can find something similar and lo and behold, I found this little guy for $4.99. It's a little smaller than the picture in the inspiration photo and obviously it's a darker color as well, but I really think that it's beautiful. Something tricky about a piece like this that's wrapped in rattan is it's going to collect dust easily and this one certainly was dusty, so I'm just giving it a good wash in hot water inside and out before I do anything else. And once this is all cleaned out and dried, this is a lovely little pitcher to just have for guests over with some water, with some fruit, or even just style it with flowers inside. Such a nice, easy purchase for $4.99. The inspiration piece was $31. Another thing that Pottery Barn always does so well with are their throw blankets. They have so many nice throw blankets and they all are really nice quality, but as you know, they can get kind of pricey. A lot of them are at least $60, $70, up into the $100 range easily depending on the type of blanket. I have been really lucky lately and have found two really awesome Pottery Barn blankets at Goodwill in the linen spin. I found this one, which I think is this faux mohair throw blanket. It looks a lot like it, if not, and it was only about $3 from the bin. I also found this other fringed one with this sort of diamond pattern detail on the front for the same, only about $3 from the bin. So I've already been really fortunate with Pottery Barn blanket finds at the thrift store lately. But I also wanted to share with you this one from Pottery Barn because I found a dupe on Amazon that I think is super similar. This one is really beautiful. It's really fluffy, but it has that waffle knit pattern in it. So take a close look because here it is on Amazon. It looks like almost the exact same blanket. And I actually have already ordered this and have it in my home. We love it. It's our favorite one that we use on the couch. This one is not quite as large as the Pottery Barn version. Theirs is 92 by 96. This is 60 by 80. So it's about the exact size of a queen mattress, if that helps. But it's way less than half the price. It's a really good dupe in my opinion. 
Now the next thing that I've been looking through Pottery Barn's website for inspiration for are coffee tables. And you know what I'm seeing more of lately? Oval tables. Not just Pottery Barn, but Article, West Elm, Crate and Barrel, Pear Gold, Williams Sonoma, Ballard Designs, you name it. Round may have overtaken other shapes lately in interior design, but the oval has never gone away. It's definitely always a classic. And rounded edges in general are nice in rooms because not only does the sinuous shape soften the space, but it enhances that sense of openness over 90 degree angles. And ovals do that just as well as round furniture. And my front living room that I'm looking for this table for actually has just a regular sofa with chairs on the opposite side. And according to this little graphic on Pottery Barn's website, an oval or a rectangle would be the best fit for my space anyway. So seeing all the ovals, not just in their tables, but in their placemats, trays, etc., it's got me thinking about this coffee table that I have walked by several times now at my local Goodwill. And this last trip, I noticed it was still there and it was marked down to just $9.99. This is a beautiful solid wood oval coffee table. It's very sturdy and it has these little casters on the feet. So I'm going to give this one a makeover and see how it looks. So first I'm just placing it in the room as is to make sure that it's a nice fit, that it's the right length. I was reading that your coffee table should be between half and two thirds the length of your sofa. And so I think that this one fits the bill. So I'm gonna be giving it a makeover. First thing I'm doing is just taking it out and giving it a sanding all over the top. I'm using an orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper on it. I'm not trying to strip this all the way down to bare wood. I'm just trying to get a smooth surface to paint. Now after the first sanding, I'm seeing the different scratches and little nicks that this has in the top, which I already was aware of, but I'm just taking this touch-up wood filler stick that came with a set of furniture touch-ups that I got on Amazon, and I'm filling it in, I'm going all directions, and then just when it's completely full, and I've done that to all the little scratches and nicks, I will go back and sand the whole top one more time to make sure that it's all now even and smooth. And now I think I have a smooth surface that's ready for paint. So I need to make a quick trip to Lowe's. I have to pick up the paint itself as well as get a new brush and a new paint tray. I was pretty torn about what color to paint this. I went back and forth between darker and lighter shades of neutrals, but one of my biggest concerns is to keep this room as open as possible. So I'm doing that with the rounded edges, but I'm gonna do that with a light colored paint also. I wanna reflect a lot of light with this and keep the room as open and airy as I can. I also like to check the mist tints table whenever I'm in Lowe's for the paints because you can get some really good deals there, way marked down from their original price. So now I'm just taking this outside, it's all smooth and ready to be painted. And I'm just gonna tape off all the little caster feet. I'm not gonna bother taking them off, I'm just putting tape right over top of them so they don't get splattered. Now this is actually primer that you see me applying here first. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy painting. So for me, I just kind of zen out and relax and have fun while I'm painting a piece. So as you can see, I did the legs first and worked my way up on this. And this is the coat of primer. The coat of actual paint is also a light color. So I didn't bother filming that on top since it didn't look you know, that much different on camera. So after I got the final coat of paint on and took this back inside, I realized something that I didn't at first, which was that this table is actually a little bit too high. It should be about an inch or two lower than your couch, and this one wasn't, as you can see from that first photo. So I need to remove these caster feet to make it fit my room, and I'm just saving those for another project later. So this is the final table with the casters removed and the fresh coat of paint, and I'm just styling this. I wanna keep it as open as possible so I don't wanna load the table up. So I'm just doing some simple books, vase with green stems, candle, and our coasters in the very center and leaving it nice and open. 
I'm really happy with how this table turned out, especially considering I only paid $9.99 for it, plus a sample size of paint, which was only around $5. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment letting me know what you liked. And if you haven't subscribed yet but would like to see these videos in your feed, go ahead and do that. And I will see you at the next video.